Hey guys, my name is Chris Walker. I'm the president of the Winchester chapter of the National Federation of the Blind of Virginia. I live in Winchester, Virginia. I wanna thank the Parker Daniels Show for inviting me in. I wanted to share my story about how I became blind and I hope this inspires you and know that blindness does not hold you back and to live the life you want. What's up to my YouTubers? My name is Anthony Parker. Welcome to another edition of the Parker Daniels Show. Before I get into the nature, the topic, I would like to say, continue to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get updates. Like, share, follow, and uh, comment, because we need all of that to make this thing run smoothly. We're gonna take you to West Virginia and speak with an individual who has created some things for our blind people, an organization, he, he, he basically, he didn't really create it, but he, he got into this organization and spearheaded and um, woke it up, as I must say, and, and turned into an organization where uh, it, he developed uh, an outreach to blind people, uh, letting, letting blind people know that uh, there, are, there is an organization out there that um, if they need any type of uh, information or direction or whatever the case may be, he spearheaded this, this organization and I applaud this gentleman for that and among a, other, a lot of other things that, that he has done. So, we're going to talk to this individual, his name is Chris and he's going to take us through his journey. And then talk about, as I mentioned, the uh, the, uh, the the spearheading uh, of, of the organization in which he basically made it into something that's much more bigger than what it was then. So, without further delay, we're gonna bring on Chris. How you doing today? Hey, Anthony. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing all right. I haven't had any, any sleep yet, but. Uh, <laughs> I ain't really, I ain't really worried about it. I'm trying to get these things done, trying to get these stories out, and let everybody know that there are some interesting people out there like you. So tell me first of all uh, how you had contact the uh, Parker Daniel Show. I actually, um, I saw a post on a Facebook group for the blind, and I saw that you had been responding to some people, and you and I uh, conversed back and forth, and. Uh, we talked a little bit about my story about how I, be, you know, I went blind, and uh, so here I am. <laughs> okay, so from you've already subscribed. So from what you you've uh, witnessed, do you think that this was this was something that you really want to uh, be a part of? And I didn't coach you, so this is honest opinion, people. Go ahead. Yes, definitely. I I did listen to some of the videos of other stories and you know kind of inspired me to actually help share my story so uh, we all come from different backgrounds and diversities and just you know sharing off of each other and learning off of each other okay so since uh you're here right now and you have the time and i have the time tell everyone your story and and mix you know the, the the fact that you are a totally blind person and how you have become blind and this you know, and then move on to the uh, nature of the, uh, of the conversation. Great. Okay, so my name is Chris Walker, and I'm 53 years old, and I live in Winchester, Virginia. And currently, I am the president of the Winchester chapter here in Virginia. And I found the chapter, I came into the chapter in the year 2015. I actually uh, became blind nine years ago, and I went into the hospital and it was basically an autoimmune disease that attacked my retinas and detached my retinas. Um, so from going to having vision at one time and then totally losing my sight very quickly, I was very, oh gosh, I was in a lot of mixed emotions. I was scared. I was fearful. Uh, when I left the hospital, they basically left me out with a regular walking cane and I was supposed to have a case manager and didn't have a case manager. I had no idea where to get services or how to even live as a blind person. And fortunately, um, I had a friend that I had worked with at the airline and she put me in touch with the state rehabilitation for the blind. 
And so I kind of said, well, you know, I don't know what to do. So I signed up for the services and I started learning orientation and mobility. I started learning assistive technology. I just started learning basic skills on daily living. I started learning Braille and uh, that really helped me uh, to figure out how to move forward on uh, with being blind. Okay, but before we, uh, that's, that's interesting, but we don't want to give it all to them at one time. <clears throat> before we uh, go any further, tell them what you had done prior to that. And um, I think you had mentioned how you had lost your sight. If, 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 if not, what, what, what was the cause and what have you? Right, the cause was for an autoimmune disease. They actually couldn't figure out exactly what had happened. Okay. Uh, basically, they just said that a virus attacked my body and it happened to attack my eyes. And they didn't know what the virus so, was? No, they never. They ran tests. They did spinal taps. They did, wow. you know, shots in my eyes. They gave me, you know, I was on steroids. They were, I was on eye drops. They were just trying to save my sight at that time. So by the time I had left the hospital, I was totally blind. I couldn't see anymore. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So, and what did you do before then? Uh, before I was working, I'm, I've always been considered like a jack of trade of all trades. Uh, I've been in many industries. I was in the insurance industry. I, did, I was in the banking industry. I did some medical association work, um, meeting planner, exhibits coordinator. I worked uh, a lot with health organizations, uh, Council for Exceptional Children. But uh, my last job that I left, I was actually working two jobs. So I was working for Allegiant Air in Las Vegas as a in-flight administrator. And then I also worked as in the, uh, in the casino on the Las Vegas Strip. Mm -hmm. So I was working as a slap Slop, floor yeah, person. Mm -hmm. So with all those jobs that you, you had performed and had done, how did it make you feel when you had become blind to know that, man, I can't do these jobs anymore? Briefly tell us, how did you feel? Well, I was saddened, um, but I think once it happened to me, I was more like, I had to keep moving forward and I wasn't trying to live like, oh gosh, I can't do these things anymore. What could I do to move forward? And so that's where I had to kind of learn this, the different skills and techniques because I wanted to be able to keep moving forward. I mean, I was in a depression for a little bit, but I figured this is not where I wanted to stay and I didn't want to stay in my house being trapped in. And so I sort of just decided this was not going to happen and that's probably moved forward. Okay. So, um, you had reached, you was in a bad cell for a second. Um, what brought you out of the, the, the depression and, and, and prompted you to continue to move forward and, and, and go develop, get the skills that you needed in order to function now as a blind person? Basically, I felt like I had no choice. It was either to sit at home or go out and be uh, a productive you know, person out in society. Even though I couldn't do some of the things that I did before, there's other things that I were, you know, I was able to do and learn from other people, like mm -hmm. from friends and family and just people with mentorship and just getting out there and learning about the blind community and what other people were doing and how they were doing it. So I asked a lot of questions. And so now where I'm at today is to help, I'm kind of paying it forward and helping the next blind person that may come into a situation. And how are you doing that? I am actually, um, right now, through my chapter, I started out doing outreach, so I started going out to the our local community and talking to uh, different organizations, uh, the universities, uh, parents of blind children, and just getting, getting it out there, the information saying just because you're blind doesn't mean that your life starts. And I've run into so many people with... Uh, uh, like their parents are going blind or they have, you know, things that are going on and they don't know where to get help. So I'm kind of there to support and our chapter there, you know, we support people and we have meetings. So, and I keep in touch with these people and right. so it's a different array of just so many, you know, ways of helping people. And what, what uh, organization is this that you do this in? This is a uh, National Federation of the Blind. 
I've heard of that. I don't question a lot of other my blind other my other blind counterparts have as well. That's 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 very commendable. Um, so how receptive have the have these people been with uh, you offering these particular services and the information? Yeah, it's been very instrumental because I wanted to find an organization and I had checked out different organizations and then I had heard about the NFB and then I found out there was a local chapter in my area and I actually ran into a couple of blind people downtown while I was walking and they said they had mentioned that there was a chapter. So I went into the chapter and I said, this is, you know, I went blind and then told them my story. And I basically told them, I said, I want to go out to the community and spread the word about helping others. And they were like, go do it. So from there, it just kind of spiraled into good things because then I was able to work on the state affiliate level. And then I've been to the National Center and I've just been able to uh, be involved in the state convention and the national convention and different meetings and so it's really, really helped me out to kind of educate myself, and then that way I could help others. And that's great. Uh, off air, you were talking about uh, you getting ready to go to um, a convention. Uh, you want to uh, expound on that? On that sure. Um, actually, there's a Richmond seminar here in Virginia, which is our capital. We're getting ready to go down to see our local legislators to advocate on behalf of the blind to um, for education or any needs of the blind. And then in January again, I'll be in Washington, D.C., and that's the National Center. Uh, and we go to Capitol Hill and we go and talk to our senators and uh, legislators. And so it's going to be a, an exciting time. You know, it's just one of the many activities they do, you know, through the organization. And that, and at, that uh, sem at those seminars or the convention, you are going to push for different um like laws to be passed for for the um blind yeah and, and yeah what what but it's advocating do you, yeah do you have any off the off, off off the top of your head of any type of laws that you would like to see passed maybe in your area or just nationwide sure in our area we were working for a parents blind uh bill and then we're also working on an education bill to where we want to teach braille within uh the schools uh who are mainstream there's many, many different types of things, like uh, guide dogs, uh, any type of, like, the silent cars. I know on the national level, there's uh, there's where the space availability, where all veterans would be able to travel. Uh, it's just a many, many different legislative things that are going on. And, and, and are, do you have a lot, a lot of people behind you that, that, that that's help advocating these type of things or is it just oh yes we definitely reach we reach out like i reach out to my local we reach out to our local delegates here and we have one-on-ones and we actually get to see them face to face and so it's definitely a good thing to make a good uh connection with them because they get to know us and what we're our concerns are as uh citizens okay and how long have you been a part of the uh, National, National Federation for the Blind? I joined them in 2015. And you so, made moves just that quick. I, I like that. Yeah, I've been moving pretty quickly. And, I, you know, I appreciate it. I'm very humbled by the opportunities that they've given me. And, you know, it's helped me grow as a person and to be independent, very self-confident. Um, you know, they have put me, have tested me, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. like in life, anything, you know, they, people will test you. And and, that, and that's they, what I want. To, I, I didn't, I didn't want to just brush over that. The fact that you had, um, and, you know, end up becoming blind and you, you know, you didn't let that stop you to, to, to say that you accepted that and you moved on real quickly and you developed the skills that you needed to and you, 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 you had become an advocate uh, for uh, other blind people and join the or organization. I mean, you know, that that I'm not saying that just to say, oh, that's a good thing and pat you on the back. No, really, you know, some people could could have just, you know, you could have just said, well, I, I'm I'm gonna sit in my uh, inside to collect the check and I don't want to do anything. You 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 didn't do that. 
And that's what I want to make sure to bring across as well. I mean, that you know, that the fact that people are and people who are visually impaired are doing things of this this nature. So I definitely want to stress that, and I'm glad that you were able to come on and talk about those particular things, you know, and, and know that that you are trying to put it down for individuals who are not just uh, visually impaired, but people of all walks of life who have some type of impairment. Am I safe to say that? Yes, very, very much so. You know, it's just like a, our lives are journeys. You know, we never know what's going to be handed down to us. And we try to do the best yep. we can because when I went blind, I was like, whoa, <laughs> what the heck happened? But, uh, you know, a lot of it was faith and praying and uh, just being, you know, it, he took me through it. So here I am. That's real talk. And, you know, I, and I, I, again, I want to com commend you for that. And I, I, and I um, you know, urge you to continue your your fight. And if there's anything that this show can do to help you out, you're welcome to come on and, and, and talk about what you need to talk about and, and advocate or whatever the case may be. Where, if anyone wants to join the chapter, how can they do that, you know? and uh, Sure, they can. Um, well. Sure, there's a website, uh, www.nfb.org. And if you live in Virginia, it's www dot nfbv dot org but uh, anybody can find if they call the national center in baltimore they can find out uh to find how to find a local chapter and if you're not in a, if you can't get to a local chapter most of them have a statewide or an at-large conference call where you can call in to uh conference calls every month to get support okay and hopefully, uh, after you go to the seminar and 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 the, or the convention and some bills are passed due to your your you know your initiative, you know you come back on and talk about it and whatnot. But in the you know in the meantime, man, I wish you the best of luck. I'm glad uh, you were able to come on the show. And before I conclude, tell the individuals why you think the Parker Daniels Show is a show that uh, is worthy of people coming on and supporting. If it is to you. I think, yeah, I definitely, you know, that's why I was interested when you posted out on Facebook. And it's just making that connection because I was able to hear, I think it was a, it was a Kim Daniels. Yeah, that's and, my cause. Uh, so I, yep, I heard her and then I heard somebody, another gentleman on there. Uh, so, and I've heard different stories of, uh, I think the guy who was, who got shot. Right, right, right. It's just, it's, it's just not, it's just, um, really good to hear where people are coming from and how they became blind and how they've been going through it so that's why you know i'm a big advocate i'm a big social media person so i keep i try to keep abreast of what's going on right i'm and, glad uh, you keeps do me updated i'm glad yeah. you do and i'm glad you are on here and if there's some more links that you want me to want me to post uh i'm gonna get with you and we'll send them and whatnot but definitely i'm glad that you were able to come on and give us this information to let y'all know that blind people are doing some things. We ain't just sitting around just waiting for like a check. Exactly. Right, Chris? Exactly. And, you know, if you know if you don't go back to work or do whatever you want to do in life, you know, go out there to your community. Go out and volunteer. You know, do something. It is doing something. Give back. You know, because you'll find a lot of people will, they do care and they give back as well. So it's, uh, you so know, hear that? hand in hand. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and pull yourself up by the bootstraps and make it happen so yeah there's a lot of support out there thank you so much for that information so with that being said y'all continue to su subscribe to the parker daniel show hit that like button hit that uh notification bell so that you can get updates on situations because you, you're going to miss out and that's that's for my um blind people my, my blind compadres and sighted, you know, because we all are in this together. Because sighted people definitely need to be aware of what's going on. So, with that being said, I want to thank Chris for coming on the show. And um, <sighs> I'm out. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you reaching out to me as well. You're welcome.